today is the first Sunday in Lent. Lent is this journey towards the cross. It's about looking at Jesus and what he went through, but it's also about understanding what this life of Jesus, how he lived, what it does to impact our lives today. And so the set lectionary reading for today is from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. A few weeks ago, we focused plainly on the baptism of Jesus. Now we're looking at the baptism and what comes next, the testing. So from Mark 1 and verse 9, we read, At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water... He saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my Son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness forty days being tempted by Satan. He was with wild animals and the angels attended to him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Today, the topic or the theme of today's lesson is valleys and peaks. Uh, Maybe... We could also call it wonders and wilderness. In the reading that we have from Mark, we find this very rapid-paced nature in the telling of the story of Jesus. And if you read through the whole Gospel of Mark, you find that it is a, a kind of ongoing theme through Mark's writing. There is this immediacy about the work that Jesus is doing. He's going from one place to the next to the next. The the word you read repeated in Mark's gospel over and over again is at once or immediately. And so here today, we have Jesus being baptized in the Jordan River, coming up out of the water, having heavens torn open and the voice of God booming down over him. You are my son whom I love. With you I'm well pleased. And immediately, while he's still wet from the waters of baptism, he gets sent out into the wilderness into the hot, dry heat of the desert, where he fasts for 40 days, where he is tempted and tested by the devil. And then he comes back from that, and he seems to immediately dive into the work of proclaiming the kingdom of God. For Mark, Jesus was on a mission. He had work to do, and he came to do it well. It's good for us to see this rapid-paced nature. You know, the the story of the baptism and the testing of Jesus comes across in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In uh, Matthew and Luke, more time is given to explain how Jesus was tested, what techniques and questions the devil used, how Jesus responded and was able to push the devil away and withstand. But here in Mark, This whole story is summed up in just two verses. Kind of imagine it's like a a lecturer who is very busy wanting to get through all of the work in his presentation. Just a few verses. Baptism, heaven open, spirit descending like a dove, voice of heaven, into the wilderness, tested by Satan, wild animals were there, angels came and attended to it. No time for anyone in the class to ask any questions. Excuse me, how was Jesus tempted by Satan, sir? No, 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 no time for that. What about someone else saying, something about the wild animals? Was he attacked by them? Did he hunt them for food? Did they lie next to him at night to keep him warm? No, no, no time for that. Sorry, so the thing about angels. The angels attended to him. Did they like bring him food and water? Or did they stand on like a palm frond and... You know, cool him down. No time for any of that. End of lecture. Time to move on. But you know what strikes me in Mark's reading of this text? Is how Jesus goes from the wonder of the baptism experience to the difficulty and the trial of the wilderness experience. 
And he experiences both wonder and wilderness, peak and valley, on the same day. Imagine what it would have been like to be there and to see heaven torn open. To see the Spirit descend on you, to be filled with that power and that strength. Imagine what you would feel inside when you hear the affirmation of God Himself saying, You are my son or my daughter, the one that I love. I am pleased by you. An amazing, wondrous moment. But straight from that, the text says that the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness. And it is there that the devil prowls, where the wild animals circle where there is a hot and dry desert days to get through and cold desert nights to endure. No water, all on your own in the vast, untouched landscape. Jesus goes straight from wonder to wilderness. It's important in Mark's writing for him to identify and show and reveal that this Jesus is not just a human being, That there is something about him. Mark wants to make plain the identity of Jesus. To leave us in no doubt that he is in fact the Christ. The Messiah. The one who has been coming from God to change the world. Mark makes it very plain for all of us that Jesus is God's son. And we see that through our reading today. Jesus, we see who he is in his baptism. Okay, so in his baptism, we hear the voice of God saying, This is my beloved Son. It's a powerful image that the heavens are torn open for Jesus, that the Spirit descends on Jesus. It is proof that Jesus is no less than the Son of God. He is divine. He is God's presence here on earth. It's important for us to remember that Jesus is always our role model and our example. He shows us how to live as human beings. And so when Jesus is affirmed at his baptism, we can take heart from the fact that in our baptisms, for us, that's when we are identified as part of God's family. It means that we too can claim to be sons and daughters of God Most High. We too can be filled with the Spirit and be led by God. We are God's children. The second way we see the true identity of Jesus comes through the temptation. We see who Jesus is through the temptation. So immediately from his baptism, Jesus faces this time of testing, temptation in the wilderness. And yet, despite the harshness of the surroundings and the seductive nature of the temptations, Jesus withstood the experience. He fasted for 40 days. He didn't give up his Lent fast halfway through. Someone offered him coffee and he wasn't drinking coffee. Okay. He he was able to rebuff whatever the devil threw at him. He quoted scripture. He leant on his relationship he had with the Lord. He did not give in and sin. But it's important to note that Jesus was led into the wilderness... By the Spirit Himself. You know, many times we speak in church about how we are justified by God. That we, you know, our sins are forgiven when we believe in Jesus. But very seldom do we teach about how after we have been justified, we need to enter a process of being sanctified. Big church words for a Sunday. But sanctification is the long road of growing in our holiness. Lots of the church today speaks about how Jesus forgives you and you are fine. That is true. But from that moment on, God calls us to be constantly transformed, to keep on growing so that we we can become more and more like Jesus. Mark seems to be saying that it's not just enough to know who we belong to, that we are God's children. We've also got to live like we are members of the kingdom of God. We've got to be willing to be led into tough times. We've got to be willing to endure the difficulties and to stay true to God. To follow God wherever it is that He might lead us. We see the incredible identity of Jesus as the Holy Son of God in that He endures the wilderness testing. 
And may that strength of Jesus, of our Lord, work in our hearts and lives, especially as we journey through this time of testing that can be lent. In the third place that we see the identity of Jesus is what he does when he gets back from the wilderness through his proclamation, through his teaching. So Jesus arrives back and he says, the kingdom of God is near. So Jesus didn't just live in the reality of God's kingdom. He also proclaimed that it had now come to earth. He announced that the kingdom was here, which means he challenged the hearers, the listeners, to respond in faith, to respond in repentance. Jesus says, repent and believe. Jesus, for us, lays out the formula of what it is to live as a member of God's kingdom. There is a part for us that comes in repentance. We've got to realize that we are all fallen. We all make mistakes. We are all in need of a Savior. None of us are perfect. But it's not just enough to repent and say, God, I'm sorry. There's also a believing and an ongoing believing that needs to happen. We need to believe that Jesus can save us from our sins. We need to believe also that He is with us on a daily basis and is journeying with us as we strive to live God's kingdom values here on earth. And Lent is a time in the Christian year when we we do some real soul searching in light of the gospel of Jesus. It's when we look at what Jesus went through for us and ask ourselves if we are living up to the standards that God requires of us. It calls on us to take some deep moments of introspection to see where we need to change or alter our way of living so we can best stay connected to God. Lent is the time when we repent and believe and follow the Lord. It's easy to say. It's easy to talk about, but it is very hard to get right and to live through. This story in Mark chapter 1 is a very good reminder for us about what Lent is like. We should also feel at this time the Spirit of God pushing us into areas of temptation and difficulty and trial and struggle. There are moments of chaos and difficulty and hurt that we will all go through. And it is possible that the Spirit of God will even lead us into those moments. I mean, we all know what I'm talking about, don't we? We all have times when we we find ourselves in positions we don't want to be. When we're having to deal with things we really don't want to deal with. We know what it's like to experience pain or hurt or discomfort. We know what it's like to feel like we are suffering and just kind of clambering to keep on going. Often... We feel like we've been thrown into a situation that we are not ready for. Dealing with things that we didn't prepare for. Wondering if we are going to make it through to the other side. And I don't know about you, but for me, often when I find myself in those difficult positions, I start asking questions. God, what did I do wrong that you are punishing me by sending me into this circumstance? Or where did I go off track? Where did I not follow God's path? To end up in this place of difficulty. I mean, I even wonder, do you think Jesus had some of those thoughts run through his mind in the wilderness? What did I do wrong? How have I ended up in the wilderness? How did that happen? But you know, Mark's gospel says, the Spirit of God drove him out. Does that sound like perhaps Jesus didn't want to go to the wilderness? to the desert, to the time of testing. I mean, it sounds quite harsh. We we hear the same language uh, in Genesis where God drives Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. It sounds like there was some real learning that Jesus had to do outside of the comfort of the land of Galilee. You know, later on, Jesus would use that same word, drive, to drive demons out of people. The Spirit drove them to the wilderness. The same spirit that tore open the heavens. The same spirit that affirmed Jesus as the Son of God who was well loved, also kicked him out of Galilee and into the hot testing desert 
where the wild animals prowl and where the devil was trying to tempt him. If it happened to Jesus, perhaps we shouldn't be surprised when that same kind of thing happens to us. Don't we also go through life in a very similar manner? We have moments of great joy, moments of wonderful affirmation, moments when we feel like God is close and has opened up the kingdom to us. And very quickly after those great peak moments, we can be thrust into the valley of an unwelcome phone call, a problem that we don't know how we're going to get around, real issues that we can't solve in our own strength. Peak to valley, sometimes in the same day, just like Jesus. Perhaps we shouldn't be surprised that this is the reality of human living. This is what we have to endure. The good and the not so good. And the message of Mark is simply this. In all times, in all circumstances, whether you are on the mountain peak with God and it feels like Heaven is broken over for you and you can see and hear and feel God in ways you've never felt before. Lean into the Spirit of God who is there. Draw all of that in as a strengthening and a time of blessing. Because there will be times when you are down in the valleys and it is hard and it is difficult and things don't make sense. Yet even there, you need to lean into the presence of God who is with you. You know, the Spirit of God drove Jesus out. But the Spirit of God was with him even in the desert. Angels attended to him. He found strength to endure what the devil threw his way. He managed to get through it. Why? Because he was not alone, even in the difficulty. We often live like we are hoping to meet Jesus on the mountaintop. Because it feels like we don't experience him anywhere else. That Jesus is with us in the good times, but we're all on our own when times are tough. Mark chapter 1 teaches us that that is not true. Lean into the Spirit. Know that He is with you. Know that if He has led you into the time of trial, maybe there are lessons to be learned and growing that needs to happen. But you are not alone. You are still the beloved son or daughter of God. You are still the one who pleases God. You need to hold on to the mountaintop experiences to fuel your soul to get through the difficulties of the valley. And that's why this reading is so good for the first Sunday of Lent. Because all of us are thinking more deeply about our faith. We are all striving to do things to keep us as connected to God as possible. And in that time, we will experience moments where we hear God's voice or feel His presence or have prayers answered. But we will also have times where we will feel like God is far away, when our prayers are bouncing off the ceiling, when we're going through difficult situation to difficult situation. But even there, God is with us. We are reminded that we are loved. We know that we can be strengthened by Him. And we can believe and live and follow Jesus through both the times on the mountain peaks, but also the times in the valleys. So may you know, without any shadow of a doubt, that the Spirit of God is with you in good times and in trying times. May you know, in the inmost part of your being, that you are loved by God. He sees you as his daughter or as his son and nothing can ever change that. But may you also know that God calls you to live for him when it's easy and especially when it is not. So may you lean on that spirit who is already with you. May that spirit give you the strength you need to keep walking and following as close to Jesus as possible. Amen. Should we bow our heads as we pray? So Lord God, we are sorry for the times that we have just assumed that you are not with us. For those moments when we have thought, ah, in this difficult place, God can't possibly be present. We realize now, Lord, all over again, that you are the God who is always with us. On the mountain peaks, but also in the valleys. And so we pray that you would help us to lean into your presence 
to rely on your strength in both the good, grand, and times of blessing, and also in the times of testing and trial. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we have you as our model and our guide about how to live here on earth. How you drew in the fullness of the baptism experience and the affirmation you received. How you used that as a source of strength to keep you going when the time was tough in the wilderness. And we thank you, Jesus, that you showed us that we can endure the time of testing. We can live as people, as part part of your kingdom. As always, Lord, we ask for your help and for your guidance, knowing that our own strength and our own willpower is not enough. So, Lord Jesus, go with us. May we know your spirit and your power at work in our lives as we strive to live for you and your kingdom. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.